with HTTP2, which is available on CrowdFront in September. Right, so it's new-ish um, because there's no reason really why setting up a, a website on S3 should take longer um, or should be easier than just setting up the full thing with HTTP2 and IPv6 and all that if you just have like some conventions, right? So uh, we use we'll use Terraform. It's from HashiCorp that uh, does Vagrant uh, Packer. Uh, it's like cloud formation, but different. Uh, it has a really, really, really pleasant uh, CLI. So you can do Terraform plan. It'll display all the things you want to do. You do Terraform apply. It builds all the things you want to do. Right? It has a really nice um, language. Uh, because we don't just use Amazon, right? but we will use it with Amazon as well. Uh, so sometimes our clients force us to use really terrible infrastructure. The basic language looks like that. So you have resources. Your resources are managed <coughs> in your Terraform definition files. Uh, and you have data sources, which, like, if you want to have, uh, you don't want to manage your Route 53 zone through Terraform, but you want to manage your Route 53 records specifically for the thing you're provisioning, right? So you have two, two sort of different concepts. Uh, our goal. For this is to just uh, set up that, you have a RAW 53, you have CloudFront, uh, we do HTTP2, we use the ACM to get a certificate, uh, and we have S3 behind that. So uh, setting up an S3 bucket is like the simplest thing you can do, right? So it's pretty, everyone should be sort of familiar with it. So you have a resource, uh, the name of the resource, uh, a definition that's just internal to Terraform, how Terraform refers to it everywhere. Uh, then we'll name it, uh, we'll set it to public read. And I uh, will show you what that looks like. I think. Uh, all right, so. Like that? Okay, do I have on? Let's see. Alright, so you'll have that. Now we do. So that it'll tell you, oh, this is the thing you want to do. Uh, and you do apply, and it'll execute that, right? So it'll create the S3 bucket we defined. Uh, we won't do anything very interesting. All right. So to set up HTTP 2, we need to go through the ACM to request a certificate. We have to do that sort of manually because. Uh, there's no, because it has to send you an email, and I don't understand why, if it's configured in my round 53, uh, but it still wants to send me an email, so okay. It has to be in the US East because of CloudFront, and we need to copy the ARN that you get once you've defined it, right, because we'll refer to that later. Uh, with CloudFront set up, SSL, HTTP2, IPv6, uh, we will set up two different ways of caching, right? Because CloudFront sort of relies on you having uh, unique URLs for everything, right? Because you can't do instant like cache purges and things like that. So uh, we set up one cache for everything, which is just our HTML, and then one like really long cache for uh, assets, right? So when we upload, when we deploy new stuff, it'll just instantly be cleared. Right? So it's like it's a bit of work getting this to work. Uh, so this is just, you have to sort of remember this, but this is just the, like the initial boilerplate, right? So uh, here we're referring to the S3 bucket we created earlier, right? So that's a really nice thing about Terraform is that you have string interpolation, right? You can just cross-reference your resources. Right? Then we'll set an alias, which is uh, the domain will hit. We'll enable IPv6. Uh, We'll set on the root object so it doesn't just list out the buckets. Um, and we have to set geo restriction for some reason that makes no sense because it's required and they don't have a default even if I don't want it. Then we'll, we'll, add, uh, we'll add SSL with the ARM specified. 
right, which is for the domain. Uh, and straightforward, we'll set some default caching behavior, right? So we'll refer to the origin we had earlier. Right, so you see, we have an origin, we called it website. And we will refer to the origin there. And we won't cache that because we want to be able to clear our cache instantly because I don't like I don't like waiting for things after I deploy them to see if it's working. And then we did the same thing, and it's really the same code, except all that stuff will cache for as long as possible. Right? Uh, in the assets slash star path. Then we'll disable error caching because when I was doing this, there's so there's two problems with caching on CloudFront. Right? So one is if you upload things, uh, if you have caching, if you cache 404s and you're uploading like HTML and CSS and a bunch of stuff, right? If you hit the HTML before your other assets have uploaded, you'll have a 404 cache for five minutes, right? Which is not great. Uh, so that's why you don't want that cache probably. Uh, for the 403, that's just if you're uh, just uploading things to test, and then you forget to set your ACL correctly, so it's private. Now you have you have now you have to sit there and just wait for the uh, five minutes to wait for the thing to be public again. It's also not great. Uh, okay. Finally, once that's provision, the same way we were doing it before. Uh, so we'll have cloud for cloud front, and we'll create a route 53 record. Okay. And that's just referencing the stuff we did before, right? So we have our distribution. It's the name of our distribution. Uh, we have the Route 53 zone, which is the other data thing there. And yeah, that's it. Then you have an IPv4 record. You have an IPv6 record, which is the same thing again, but AAA for the quadruple A. And that's it. Uh, and the code, so I realize there's a lot of code. And it's available on GitHub, and you can just view it. And yeah, that's it. Well, that Thank you. Let's say if you want to use AWS only, yeah, what would be advisable to go with Terraform or CloudFront? Oh, well, I would use CloudFront. Oh, right. That, that's a good, that's an nice So you can provision things outside of uh, AWS with CloudFormation as well, right? But you sort of have to define it yourself. I've never tried that. Uh, because for us, it's about a lot of other things. Uh, if you're comfortable using it, we're not. I don't like looking at those files. Like, I don't want to write JSON for a living. And I know you can use YAML. I, but I think they look awful. If you, oh, come on. What language was the? It's, oh, it's ACL. Hold on. I'll show you a really long example. Uh, I should call it a language. Uh, right. No, it's not. <laughs> that's it. All right. So can I? Okay. So here is the stuff that's actually getting right. So it's just it's sort of like key value different. Those variable definitions I don't like. They're very wordy, right? But if you go into the actual distribution thing, I think it looks. I think it looks really nice. It's a bit like you have to get used to it the first time, but besides that, it's really nice. Can you like pretty JSON Uh, does it? <laughs> can, can, can you start any logic? Yes, well, okay. So, uh, the thing I was doing when I was defining uh, like IPv6 and IPv4, what you could do is you define a template and then uh, you can refer things to them to, through templates. Uh, I, I don't, how, you can sort of insert, uh, you can insert like declarative logic. I don't know if you can like loop over things and have like a whole Turing complete sort of thing like you would do with Ansible, right? Uh, I, I don't think so, because I was looking at, oh, can I make a loop? You, you could use something like Conf-D to templatize your bits, and then you could have all those sorts of uh, uh, logic in it. Right, so uh, one of the, Everything that drives this particular file, which is not something I wanted to go through, really, but uh, is 
those three variables drives everything else, right? So if you have, I just want to set up a static uh, site, and you've done it once already, right? You're just overriding this, and you're not overriding it in this file. You would just do it on like the command line somewhere. Hmm? Uh, you can also use a module. Yes, they're fantastic, but I didn't want to go through uh, um, all of that as well. So. Yeah. So yeah, you get really quick conventions. Like I think my designer could put up a static site if he wanted to, and it would be fine, <laughs> right? From the outset, it would just be fine. Isn't there any keys inside here? Sorry? Can you embed keys inside here? Yes. Well, the AWS secrets. Yeah. Yeah. So you would put them up in the provider. I didn't do that because you're all thieves, so as far as I'm concerned. So no. uh, because. So it's about in general best practice, right? So you see, you guys actually doing it. Uh, I, well, you keep it in source control, I guess? No. no. I, w I don't keep it in source control. So you would, so on, uh, you could keep it in the environmental variables that you put into your CI normally, right? So on Travis, you could set environmental variables. And then they have a specific convention um, for picking up. My credentials on my computer is in the standard.aws slash credentials. Right. Right. So I, I put it there. Um, if you don't put it and you just run it, it'll just start asking you for them. So. The, the best way I found is to use the profile. Right. Because I run like 50 AWS accounts. And all. Right, right, right. And yeah. So one of the things I, f I figured out when I, while I was doing this was uh, you can't set your region anywhere. That one you actually have to define inside of. Uh, because you don't set region in the slash credentials files, you set it in the slash config file. Which you put the region here, but you still have right. the... Like the profile you put or something, and that is a name profile. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. So that way, even if you, if, if another de uh, de developer checks out the, the file, right, in that sense, you're putting it in the source control, right. at least he has to uh, get the AWS key from himself, just fill up with maybe the account name. That's right. normally my convention. Right, right. And I think that settles the whole cred uh, credentials issues. Not oh, absolutely. Issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> right. Um, Does Terraform like uh, do any? Uh, by checking. Sorry? Like, say you set up your CloudFront or whatever. Uh -huh. Does it have like Terraform space test that actually tests? Yes, so in my CI, I will check if there's unapplied Terraform changes. Right? And so if someone goes and edits, yeah, someone goes and edits the definition file, I'll, the build will break until they go and manually apply. So you can put the whole thing in CI. I don't, I'm not uh, brave enough to do that. I want like a developer to sit down and look at it and be like, yes, that's what I want to have happen, and apply the change. Yeah, but I block, I block if there's a change you haven't uh, applied. Um, but, uh, there's, oh, there's, so there, uh, there's two more things. So you were, we were having an email thing earlier, right? Uh, and then you were saying about leaky abstractions. So I can give you two. Uh, okay. One oh, is glad you're right, right. Uh, one is right now, if you modify your CloudFront configuration uh, in 0.8.2, which is the current version, it won't work because it'll only work on the initial creation of it and it'll blow up because there's a bug they're working on which is going to be solved very soon. Another one, which is bigger, is if you have a lot of caching definitions, uh, it, you can't set the order of them because they're using a Go set, and sets don't have orders, and you can't specify order, which is very annoying. So the behavior of the CloudFront. Yeah. Right, so you have a list of like, oh, uh, slash asset star, it has this caching rule, slash something else has, to, uh, something else has this caching rule, and so on, right? So this works for this example, because you have just have a default one and an assets path, right? But if you had like 10 paths, you'd have to go and override it on Amazon itself until they fix that bug, which has been around for a little bit longer. Yeah. That's the ugly. Otherwise, it's great. Well, uh, any more questions? Here we are. Thanks, Kit. Um, uh, yeah, infrastructure is code. Mm. I want to see more of it.